there is so many different order blocks. And if you don't even know one version of an order block, then there is a lot to learn. But don't worry, I got you. In this video, I'm going to explain from A to Z, step by step, everything you need to know about this ICT concept. The first version of an order block we're going to talk about is the continuation order block, as that's the most known order block of all of them. So a continuation order block, in simple terms, is a down close candle in an expansion phase. So right here we see the price swept sell side liquidity. Then now we're starting to expand higher, right? But then we have a down close candle within this expansion phase. Now this down close candle is our continuation order block and it is made to support price reaching an important level. So right here we see we have this down close candle within this expansion phase, right? So this down close candle, we could be anticipating price to reach down for and then reach buy side liquidity. And right here, price reaches down for this order block. So now we could be anticipating this order block to send price higher up to this buy side liquidity. And we do see price sweep that buy side liquidity. Now our bearish example looks something like this, where we see that every up close candle is acting as resistance to send price lower into an important level. As we see price reach up into this up close candle, that send price lower. Then again, price reach up into this up close candle right here. Failing to reach the mean threshold at the, as this is a propulsion block, and I will get into that later in the video. And then send price lower, reaching sell side liquidity. So we can see that every up close candle is acting as resistance until price reach an important level. And though we still see price still reach lower after taking out that sell side liquidity. The next order block we're going to talk about is the propulsion block. Now a propulsion block is basically an order block of an order block. And this maybe sound a bit confusing, but it will make sense. So here we do see we have an order block when price makes a candle close above that candle. Now then price makes a retracement into this order block, creating another order block of that order block. So we see that we have this down close candle that reaches into this order block. This down close candle, when price closes above it, is now an order block. And this order block is a propulsion block. And we can be very interested in the mean threshold of that order block. And the mean threshold is basically the 0 0.5 range. And we can find the 0 0.5 range from going from the high of that body down to the low of the body, as the wicks are not larger than the body in this scenario. And here we will find the mean threshold by using the wicks as the body is smaller than the wicks. Now, this order block is going to be very sensitive around the mean threshold, as I said before, it was the 0 0.5 range. So whenever price reaches into a propulsion block, we could be anticipating the next candle to be an expansion candle. So we see that price reaches down, makes a small mohawk through that mean threshold, which is permissible, and then makes an expansion candle. And same over here, price fails to reach a mean threshold of that propulsion block, and then makes an expansion candle. So a propulsion block is very sensitive around that mean threshold area. The next order block we're going to talk about is called a change in state of delivery, CISD. And it is a bit confusing, so we have to hang on here. Now, we see that price reaches sell side liquidity or sweeps sell side liquidity. And when price sweeps sell side liquidity, we usually have one or two down close candles taking out that sell side liquidity. Now, this down close candle is also an order block. And when price makes a close above the opening price of the highest down close candle, as we see, we have two consecutive down close candles going down into that sell side liquidity, and then we have an up close candle. Now, these two consecutive down close candles, when price makes a close above the highest body of that candle, it is now 
valid as a change in state of delivery. And it don't need to close above the high of the wick, only the highest body. Now this change in state of delivery, if we extend this out, we can see the price makes a retracement into this change in state of delivery to the tick and then moves higher, reaching buy side liquidity. So when price sweeps sell side liquidity and creates an order block off of that, we call it a change in state of delivery, CISD. And another bonus we can see over here that we also had a order block with that. So this we could be anticipating being a change in state of delivery. Another example of a change in state of delivery, we see price reaches down, taking out these relative equal lows. Then after that, price makes a close above the high of this body as it's only needed to close above the high of the body, not the wick, as we talked about before. Then price makes a retracement. And now we could be anticipating price reaching for buy side liquidity. And we can see the price sweeps buy side liquidity. Now this change in state of delivery is a very powerful ICT tool, as we usually see right after price makes that change in state of delivery a retracement, and then if we have a large downclose candle with small wicks, that change in state of delivery is going to be high probability, and we could be anticipating a strong reaction as we see we had consecutive expansion candles to the upside. The last change in state of delivery example. A bearish one, we can see that price swept major buy side liquidity over here. And then after that, we swept that high, which just swept that major buy side liquidity. And now we made a close below these three consecutive up close candles, which was right at that high. Now, these three consecutive up close candles, we could be anticipating to act as a change in state of delivery. So Pi should make a retracement and then sweep some of this low resistance liquidity we have. And right here already, see that price makes a retracement up into the change in state of delivery and took out that sell side liquidity. So let's see if price also could reach this low down here. And we do see price reach that low. Now a way you can combine these order blocks with other ICT concepts or simply make a strategy off of these order blocks, that's what I'm now going to show you. So here we see the price rain sell side liquidity. And we also have this inversion fair value gap. So now let's see what happens. And we see price makes a close above that inversion fair value gap. But what do we also see? a change in state of delivery. So now this has given two confirmations, as when price creates a change in state of delivery, we usually also see a market structure shift. So we have an order block, a IFEG, and also a market structure shift. So then we could be anticipating price potentially making a retracement into this change in state of delivery, creating a balanced price range. And right here, <clears throat> we see that price makes a retracement into this change in state of delivery. And usually when price makes a retracement, leaving a fair value gap like this, it usually ends up being a breakaway gap. But that's what, not what we're going to talk about currently. So when price creates this or makes a retracement into this change in state of delivery, we see it makes a small mohawk. And then we could be anticipating price reaching higher. So a chain or a trade entry could be placed at the higher of the change in state of delivery. Then we could put our stop loss at the low and then target internal range liquidity. And we see that doesn't make a great risk reward ratio. So that's also something you have to be careful when trading consecutive downloads candles that's based on change in state of delivery as usually your stop loss is going to be a lot more wider. 
and we could just target to over squad ratio. So let's see what price ends up doing. And we do see price reach up for that to risk reward ratio. When we have a continuation on a block, we usually see that is paired with a volume imbalance or a fair value gap. So here we see that price is currently delivering from this CP, then reaches lower, leaving behind this up close candle. Now this up close candle is a order block. So we see right here at 8.30, price reaches up into this order block at the opening that is also paired with this volume imbalance. And then price reaches lower. As we see, sweeping sell side liquidity. So we usually see a continuation order block being paired with a fair value gap or a volume imbalance, or when price makes a immediate retracement up into that, it also leaves a immediate rebalance. And we could actually also see that this order block is a propulsion block. Now a propulsion block and a continuation order block often looks the same, but here we can see that price reached up into that propulsion block, failed to reach the mean threshold, then expanded lower, as we usually like to see, and then ran that sell side liquidity.